Welcome to Resonate the Sound. Thank you so much for allowing us into your homes. I'm Chris Honekin. You know, for those of you that were, some say child of the 80s or kids of the 80s, you know, like I am. You know, there used to be a TV show that aired on ABC and had a long, long run from 1985 to 1992. And of course, you know, if you know the show I'm talking about, you know, feel free to know the interact. We're talking the television show that starred Alan Thicke, Joanna Kearns, Kirk Cameron, Tracy Gold, Jeremy Miller, and of course incorporated other cast members through the season. But those were your main five. And one of their songs, and the, the, the most famous song ever, when it came to that show was as long as we have each other. Trust me, I ain't gonna try to sing. Pretty much, the show that I'm talking about is literally something we're gonna be, is the subject of tonight's Resonate the Sound. Tonight, Chapel Pastor Tyler Boone presents to us, yeah, let's look at this inside of a spiritual sense of what I'm talking about, and yes, the show that I've talked about alone goes with tonight's topic. And it all centers around growing pains. Tyler, it's all yours. Let's go resonate. When I was preparing for this, I had an entirely different idea. I knew what I wanted to preach about, had everything, was getting it ready. But as I was getting ready, it's like, this just doesn't feel right. So I, I just knew what it was, but then I realized I was wrong. So then I felt like God was telling me, hey, talk about growth. And I was like, oh, that, that's good. That's what I want to talk about. But as I started getting that ready, it felt better, but it still didn't feel right. So then I realized God doesn't want me to speak on personal growth tonight. He wants me to speak on growth in the church. And it's never a bad time to talk about this. It's never a bad time to talk about growth in the church, how to make your church grow, or the lack of growth. It doesn't matter. It's never a bad time, but I feel like this is actually the perfect time. It's going to happen. It just takes time. So, and growth, it's been something that McKenna and myself have been talking about recently. Um, and I'm going to be completely transparent with you. It, it is discouraging at times. Sometimes it is hard to keep a positive attitude um, when it comes to this, you know, we've, we've looked at all these possibilities for growth. We've wondered if it's our fault. We've tried to figure out what the best way to handle this type of situation is. You know, we've thought about it, and it's nothing against the church or anything. It's just when you love something so much, you want what's best for it. Whether it's, you know, your family, your friends, your husband, your wife, it doesn't matter. If you love something, you want what is absolutely best for that person, that place, that thing, it doesn't matter what it is. So we know how God is working and resonating in our lives, and we want everyone else to experience that as well. When you love something so much, you want it to reach its full potential. And we want it to grow now, and we want it to be what we know it's going to be in the future. But, you know, God has us here for a reason. We have great people here. I mean, we have wonderful people here. We have people in the church who, they spend all their free time helping this church. Every second that they possibly can, they spend thinking of ideas for the church, up here cleaning for the church, doing something for the church, and they devote so much to it. And I want to thank you all for that real quick because I feel like that's something that I don't do enough. 
you know, McKenna and myself are in charge of Wednesdays and everything, and y'all show up every week ready to worship with us and everything and just lifting us up. So, uh, you know, we appreciate everything that y'all do to help, and I'm sorry if we don't tell you that enough, but I just want to tell you that now. And the reason I'm telling you this right now, and it's because I was thinking about this, and I was thinking about what it would be like if I was up here speaking right now with every seat in here filled. I don't know why, but I was, and I could see it, y'all. I literally could see it in my mind. I was standing right here where I am now. There wasn't an empty seat in this entire church, and it sounds nice, doesn't it? It sounds great, but when I saw it, you know, I was up here, and I was, like I said, in front of a full house, no empty seats. I, was, I started speaking, and then I looked up, and nobody was paying attention. You know, everyone's on their phones. There's people asleep. There's people talking to each other. In my head, this is how I saw it. <laughs> so, so, you know, nobody cared. You know, it, nobody was smiling and having a good time. No one wanted to be here. No one wanted to be learning about God. It was 200 people in here and not one person giving any effort to me up here speaking. So it wasn't as nice as it sounded. At first thought, I was like, wow, a full church, that's amazing. But when I saw it, it wasn't what I was expecting. But that's actually what inspired this lesson tonight because I feel like that vision in itself was God trying to show me something because we, or myself at least, I can speak for myself, I can't speak for all of you, spend so much time being upset and being disheartened by the things that we don't have that we forget about what we do have. So, you know, I've spent some time upset and bothered myself, and a large part of it, you know, it's, it's hard seeing McKenna blaming herself for the lack of growth when she has worked so hard and put so much time and put so much effort into it. And that's kind of, and it got me thinking. And then, like I said, I saw this, and it, I started focusing on what the future is instead of what I have now. And that's not what God wants me to do. God showed me this picture because he wants to teach me a lesson. He wanted to teach me that filling every seed in here isn't always what we would expect isn't always as great and as peachy as it sounds. Would I rather be up here talking to 200 people who just couldn't care less about a word that I had to say? Or would I rather be up here speaking to 50 people who just were passionate for God? Would I rather be up here speaking to 200 people who are constantly on their phone, they're texting their friends, they're checking their Facebook and all that? Or would I rather be up here talking to 50 people who are giving me their full undivided attention when I'm talking? Would I rather be speaking to 200 lukewarm Christians, followers of Christ, or 50 people in this church who are on fire for God? Yeah. You know, I can assure you, I'm choosing that 50 every time, without a doubt in my mind. That's what it would be. So this church is going to grow, y'all. It's going to grow just by coming in here and the environment. When someone comes to this church, they're not going to forget it. They're going to want to come back. That's the way it was for me. I came into this church right as soon as this church opened. I didn't get to witness the old church and everything, and I stepped foot in this church and knew that I needed to be a part of it. And that's how it's going to work. So, well, we have to remember that the church is going to grow, but it's not going to grow because I want it to grow, and it's not going to grow on my time. It's not going to grow because McKenna or Christian or anybody in here wants it to grow, or it's on their time. It's, it's going to grow because it's on God's time. It's going to grow when God tells us that we are ready for it to grow. And when it starts growing, y'all, it's, it's going to grow. God has a plan for us tonight, and he has a plan for every single one of you in here who come in here week in and week out with the full intentions of becoming closer to God and learning more about God. He has a plan. And as I'm speaking to you now, I can assure you that this is way better than what I saw. There wasn't a single person in that packed house, you know, taking notes or listening to what I was saying. There wasn't any passion or desire there wasn't any enthusiasm like pastor or cornbread or Christian give everyone up here speaking every single week. There was none of that. There was just people silent, thinking about what they're going to do when they get out of church, checking their Facebook, trying to hit up their friends and figure out if they can make some plans for it or not. It was nothing like I expected. So in all reality, it was full of people so content with their physical and their earthly belongings that they didn't realize that they were spiritually poor. And I'm not sure if you ever thought about that, but that's how it is. Some people come in here with the idea like, all right, you know, I have money and I have this. I'm a good person because I'm just giving this money to the church. But they come in here to save face. They don't come in here to worship God. And if you have all these belongings, but you're spiritually poor, what are you doing for yourself? What kind of future is that? Because 
when you're on your deathbed, all that money and all that stuff ain't going to matter. What's going to matter is your relationship with God. And we spend a lot of time not realizing that. So, I mean, I know it's easy to get upset or just, like I said, plain discouraged because we aren't experiencing the growth that we want. And if you do that, don't. Because God's cooking something up and he's got a plan for us. You know, last week, Brother Christian preached and he talked about some spiritual growth, personal growth. He talked about how to individually grow in God. And that is the first step for our church to grow. That, you have to do that before you can ever worry about growing the church. You have to know how to spiritually grow yourself. So, first, we have to remove ourselves from the situation. He stressed that last week, but that's something we cannot stress enough. You have to remove yourself and get yourself out of the way and allow God to do the work, because God's going to work in us. We just cannot get in the way. We can't put our own selfish desires in front of God's will. That's not how this works. In Matthew chapter 16, Jesus comes to his disciples, and he simply asks them, Who do people say the Son of Man is? That's all he asks. And and the thing is, you know, you would think people would be like, oh, Jesus Christ is the Son of Man, and that's not what happened. He got many answers, actually. You know, they were honest with him. They said, John the Baptist. Some said Elijah. Some said Jeremiah. So it depends on who you ask, because they were giving different answers. But I want to talk about the next few verses that were in there. So it's Matthew chapter 16, verses 15 through 18. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So while others at this time were debating on who the Son of Man is, Peter knew, and Peter told him, He stated this specifically to God. And the verse I want to talk about is verse 18. It says, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. So, and to understand what this means, you have to look back and translate it. Because in the Greek language, the word for Peter means small stone. And the word rock comes from a form of that same exact word and means it refers to a mountainous peak. But that doesn't mean upon Peter I will build my church. It means upon the faith exhibited by Peter... I will build my church. Because while others were uncertain about who the Son of Man was, Peter wasn't. No one told him or anything. He just had such faith in God that he knew that Jesus Christ is the Son of Man. So it was his faith in God that showed him this. But back to the translation, it says, Peter is a small stone, so thou art a small stone, and upon this rock I will build my church. And as I said, the word rock refers to a mountainous peak. So upon this mountainous peak I will build my church. And this entire thing started out with just one simple act of faith. It started out with God just asking, you know, who is the Son of Man? And Peter saying, you're the Son of Man. Jesus Christ is the Son of Man. So the faith of truly believing Jesus is the Son of Man is how this started. And although this states that Jesus will build his church upon this peak, we can't reach this this peak without first experiencing faith. Because that's what even got them into this conversation. So the church is built right now. Our church is built, and it's here. But it's our job to exhibit faith to let it reach that peak that we all desire. Because we are never going to reach that peak if we don't exhibit the same faith that Peter had. To be able to ask, who is the Son of Man? And without any hesitation, just, Jesus Christ, you are the Son of Man. And so this is something that we must all do. We all want Resonate to reach its peak. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. We all want Resonate to be what we know that it's going to be. But we have to get out of the way for this to happen. So let's exhibit faith because we know that God is going to make this happen. But we can't expect this to happen if we cannot look at someone when they ask us and honestly say that Jesus Christ is the Son of Man. So now I want to talk about literal growth for a minute. So everyone in this area has a basic general knowledge of farming. We're surrounded by it, so you at least know just bits and pieces of it. Um, And the Bible talks about it too a little bit. It's in Mark chapter 4 verses 26 through 29. And he said, So is the kingdom of God as if a man should cast seed into the ground, and should sleep and rise night and day, and the seed should spring and grow up. He knoweth not how. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, after that the full corn and the ear. But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he putteth in the sickle, because the harvest has come. 
So this, you know, it's about farming, you know, it's about corn, as it says, but this is actually the exact formula on church growth. The church is our seed, and the church has been planted. So the church is here, but now we have to wait on that seed to grow. We have to wait on that church to grow. And that's the hard part, y'all. It really is. You know, we can't just make it grow. We can't just mag magically make it just sprout out all of a sudden, and then voila, it's grown. That's not how it works. We have to wait. When farmers plant their seed, they have to sit around, and they have to wait for the harvest. They get their seed planted, and then it's a waiting game. And that's what we have to do now. And I want to make sure you know, you know, that's not to say that we can't help the growth, because it is our job and our responsibility to create conditions that are appropriate for growth in the church. We have to do everything possible to make the perfect environment for our seed to grow. When farmers plant their seed, they have to take care of it, otherwise it's not going to grow. They have to get out their fertilizer, they have to get all the weeds out of the field, they have to do all these things to promote the growth of their seed, which is the same thing that we are designed to do for the church. What we have to remember is that we can also inhibit the growth of our seed. As well as we can plant it and make it happen, we can also stop it. And it's a whole lot easier it is to stop it than to make it grow. So if we aren't providing the right environment for our seed to grow, how can we ever expect it to grow? Only God can grow the church, and I want to make sure everyone knows that, but we are in charge of the conditions. So now I want to talk about a timeline for growth, and this is just in some aspects of life. After I get a drink of water. Uh, growth, like I said, it doesn't just happen overnight. It takes time, and it takes the proper care. It takes hard work, and it takes dedication. So let's talk about babies for a second, because that's something that we can all, we all know about, we can relate to. The average length of a newborn baby is about 19 to 20 inches. So pretty small. You know, then you fast forward 20 years. The average 20-year-old man is just over 69 inches tall. So that's 20 years, and that's a 50-inch growth. That didn't happen overnight. It took time. It took 20 years for him to reach that. And now um, redwood trees. I'm sure you've at least seen pictures of these. You know, they're on the West Coast, so Oregon, California, that area. But they're insane. They're beautiful, you know. A redwood seed is just an eighth of an inch long. The seed is just an eighth of an inch. So tiny. And after being planted, a redwood can grow up to 100 feet tall in 40 years or less. So it depends on how you take care of it, though. That tree's not going to grow just because you planted the seed. It's going to grow because you planted that seed and you took care of it. So these trees can actually grow up to five feet per year if you provide the proper conditions and they can live to be up to 2,000 years old and that's just if you take care of it and you know we can relate that to the church this church we can have a hundred different churches we can make resonates name live on for 2,000 years but we are not going to do that if we don't create these conditions we aren't going to be able to do that if all we're worried about is that the seed is planted and then we don't want to do any more work because we're going to have to work you know the tallest of these uh, redwood trees is about 380 feet tall so 2,000 years, 380 feet tall, you know, that's magnificent growth, and that's what this can be. So it's enough wood to build 15 five-bedroom houses. That one tree can build 15 five-bedroom houses. So just to put that into perspective a little bit, do, do any of you, have you ever looked up anything about bamboo? Because bamboo is actually really interesting. You know, so bamboo, you plant it, you're watering it, day in, day out, you're taking care of it, and you keep doing it, and after one year, nothing happens. You've watered it every day, you've taken care of it, but one year, nothing. So whatever, you keep watering, you keep taking care of it, and after two years, nothing. Still nothing. So not even in the slightest, but here is where it gets good. So you've done this for two years, but now you keep watering it. You keep taking care of it, and you're dedicating your life to this bamboo. And finally, after three long, hard years, guess how much it grows? None. Once again, none. Still nothing, not even in the slightest. So we, let's do it again for a fourth year. We water it, we take care of it. Nothing happens again. But finally, finally, after five years of it, you start seeing growth. And when it starts growing, y'all, it grows. In six weeks, this bamboo that you've spent all this time on will go from no growth whatsoever to 80 feet tall. 
80 feet. So you spent five years working hard on it, saying nothing, but you kept doing it. And then in six weeks, 80 feet tall. And, you know, that's just one species of bamboo. There's plenty of species. Uh, They all grow differently. There's some that will go three feet in just 24 hours. So, you know, it's fascinating. But like I said, the thing about bamboo is it requires that hard work and that dedication. And that's the same for the church. It's what it should be compared to because it's going to take that. It's going to take hard work and it's going to take dedication. I'm not saying it's going to take five years to grow the church, but it takes time, y'all. It's going to take effort and it takes the perfect conditions. So, you know, growing bamboo, it takes the perfect climate, the perfect soil. You have to have the perfect overall environment for that specific species and that growth pattern because they're all going to grow differently. So it's easy to become discouraged and give up. Can you imagine, you know, planting this bamboo, so excited for it, and then, you know, watering it, taking care of it every single day, you know, after one year, nothing, two years, nothing, three years, and then five years to see any growth whatsoever. You, you must love something if you're going to work on it for five years. And I, <laughs> so, and that's what I want to stress. So, you know, you keep doing all these things, nothing changes, but then after that hard work you've put in, you kept up with it, you kept that hard work, you kept that dedication, finally, 80 feet in six weeks. So, and that's where we need to make sure our mind is at because we have to cre- keep creating a loving environment for people that want to come here. We have to create this overall, the perfect soil for people to want to come in here and, and stay at Resonate, to come in here and worship with us. It's not all about what you see right now. I mean, we're going to keep promoting this and promoting this, and we're going to keep working on this environment, and then out of nowhere, it's going to come, y'all. It's going to. So, you know, we just keep putting in the time, the effort, the work, the dedication, all these things. And it's going to come. And like I said, when, when it comes, y'all, there's nothing we can do to stop it. So we have to be ready for it. For our church to grow, we must also um, recognize the head of the church at all times. And it's easy for us to get that confused, you know, because we sometimes get caught up and we believe that someone here is the head of the church. We think that just because I'm preaching right now, I could be considered the head of the church, and that's not the case at all. Not even close, actually. So in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 20 through 23, which he wrought and crossed when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth in all. So God gave Jesus to be the head over all things in the church. All things, not some things, not just the big decisions that we're too scared to make, not just the little decisions that we think don't matter. All things, whether it be picking the color of chairs or deciding if we want to create a new church, Jesus Christ is the head of this church. So we have to make sure that we are following him far above all principality, power, might, dominion, No matter how great one person is or how faithful one person is, there's nobody that can ever come close to comparing to Jesus Christ. And, you know, that's something we can all agree on. So why do we make things about us? I mean, we agree on it, but yet we're so quick to jump in the way or to take credit when things are done here. That's not putting Jesus Christ at the head of the church. So why do we do that? And why do we put ourselves in front of what's best for the church? Why do we try to use our own personal judgment to grow and act like we own this place? Because we don't at all. There's not a single church on this earth that will last if they do not make Christ the head of the church. This isn't just something, this isn't a lesson that's just for Resonate. This is for all churches. Everyone can look at this. If you do not make Jesus Christ the head of your church, you will go nowhere. It's that simple. There's no exceptions. How can you expect growth if you're not putting the person that you're growing for first? And, you know, this isn't just about people who come up here and preach. You know, any of us in this church, no matter who you are, how often you come, it's easy to get discouraged if you do not see the growth. It's easy for us to come in here and right now and see an entire empty row right there and then, you know, a few people here and there, a few people here and there, and become discouraged, and to think that, oh, we're not reaching people, or we're not worshiping the right way because we're not seeing 
growth, and that's not the case. This church has not even been here for a year yet, and we've already grown. We've made big things happen. We have all these things. We have, you know, family night where people come in here and they bond and they're, they're friends. You know, we have the ASU games. We get our name out in so many different ways. So whether we realize it or not, we're growing. Whether it's, it may not just be people in the seats, but we are growing because people are going to know our name, and that's what it takes. It takes the right mindset. You can't get upset, and you can't stay discouraged because you do not see people in these seats. Because when people come in here, or even outside when we're doing things, and they see us walking around sad, negative, mopey, not wanting to be there, what are we creating for our church? What kind of look is it for Resonate if we are walking around here with our Resonate shirts on, all ready to do stuff, but we're negative, or we're talking down to people, or acting like we're better? What kind of growth are we trying to create by doing things that God wouldn't do, basically? So I'm going to go ahead and close now. I still have a lot to say, but I'm going to go ahead and start closing. So, um, you know, the altars are open if you want to pray, but I want to reiterate some things for all of us. The first thing is we need to stop asking ourselves, how do I get my church to grow? Because that's not the appropriate question. The question that we should be asking is, what is keeping my church from growing? So, you know, as we talked about earlier, the church is the seed, but we do not control the growth. The church is the seed, but we do not control the growth. Are we fulfilling God's vision for our church, or are we trying to fulfill our own? Are we doing what's best for the church, or are we doing what's convenient for us? For our church to grow, we have to allow God to work on us. We have to let him in our lives, and we have to let him move through us so that way we can reach other people. We have to allow him to do this so that way we can get people in this church. We have to create the proper environment for our seed to grow. Things that are healthy, they grow, and they grow fast. They're not going to stop. They grow. So are we creating the proper environment, or are we creating barriers to prevent our growth without even realizing it? Are we putting in the work and the effort and the time like we should? Are we doing these things? Growth is gradual. If we get discouraged with the lack of growth, we're already implementing a negative environment for our growth. And it's, there's no way to go about it. It's true. So, you know, bamboo, like I said, it takes five years before it starts growing. It doesn't take five years to reach its full potential. It takes five years before it grows an inch. And then after five years, it doesn't stop. 80 feet in six weeks. Imagine looking out into your yard and seeing nothing for five years. And then you look at it six weeks later, and it's 80 feet tall. So if we lose our train of thought or we lose sight of our goal, we're already inhibiting growth. We're already stopping it. We're nipping it before we can even get it started. One thing I want to stress right now is our mindsets because it takes the right mindset for a church to grow, and there's nothing you can say to argue that. It takes a mindset. This mindset, it can stop growth before it starts. It, it can make people leave the church. It can do exactly the opposite of what we want to do. So we have to wake up, and we, have to, we need to pray every morning. We need to pray for God to renew our mind so that way we can please Him in all aspects of our life, to grow in ourselves, to grow as a church, for others to grow. We need to wake up every morning and do that because without a renewed mindset, what are we expected to do? We have to be focused on God because you're either bringing people to God or you're pushing them away. So before you do something, are you, just think about it. Is this action going to give off the vibe, the love of God? Is it going to bring people closer to God? Is it going to want to make people learn about God? Or is it going to push them away? Is it going to reinforce their sins? We're given plenty of opportunities for growth, y'all. Like I said earlier, we work events at ASU. We do fundraisers. We use social media more than most churches do. We've done the bucket drop. We've stood on the side of the road just to lift people up. We've opened the doors for church just for people to be able to come in here and pray. We've had people here so that way if they need to help praying, we would help them pray. We do family night, so we invite all of our friends, all of our families and everything, 
whether it's people who come to the church or not, so that way they can come in, we can play games, we can all bond and just bask in the love of Christ. We do these things, and they're great, but without the right mindset, what are we doing? Are we looking at these things as a way to spread the word, or are we looking at them as a job? Because if you come into here and you go work these games, or you come in and you help with family night, or you come in here when we're doing the prayer meetings just because you feel like you have to be here, not because you want to be here. If you don't come in here wanting to worship God and you look at this as a job and just something that you have to do to save face, then we've already stopped growth. We're not going to grow if we come in here just to save face or to look good or to post on Facebook like, hey, y'all, look, I'm at church and I'm worshiping God. If we're just looking for attention or looking to seem like a better person, growth isn't going to happen. We have to have a renewed mindset. We have to have a renewed mindset for growth. So, I mean, are we coming here to talk about God, or are we coming to talk to our friends? Yeah. And, you know, it's, you look around and you see so many different churches. I'm not saying specifically here, but they'll come to church, and they don't come to learn about God. They don't come to talk about God. They come because their friends come. And they're going to go out and eat. They're going to go hang out and play some games after church. So they come because it's convenient because they can just leave straight from church. And that's not just for kids. That's for young adults, adults, anybody. If you're coming in here for the wrong reason, I mean, what are you doing? And here's the thing about these opportunities. God has blessed us with these. This wasn't luck or anything. We were blessed with these things. But if we look at these as jobs instead of blessings, instead of wonderful blessings and wonderful opportunities for Resonate, we are not going to grow and we cannot expect to grow. So how can we grow when we don't do things that promote growth is what I'm getting at. We go into these things with a negative attitude and that negative energy, and we think that it's okay because the people that we're working with that's helping us, they know that I'm a faithful person and that I'm a good person and that I have good intentions, but I'm having a bad day, so it's okay for me to come in here and be negative and give off vibes that God would never give. And that's where we're wrong, because it's not our job to focus on the people in the church or people that are already followers. We should be focusing on the people who are lost and the people who need guidance. And if we come in here representing Resonate and we look lost and we look like we need guidance, this isn't the place where they're going to want to be. So growth is coming, and I know we want it now, and I know it's easy to become impatient, but it's coming. And we have to realize the blessings that we are receiving while we're waiting on it. So while we're waiting for the church to grow, yo, we're growing every day. The amount that I've grown just in the past few months from trying to help this church and everything is just outrageous. So all this time I've been focusing on how can I help the church grow and all these things. I didn't realize how much I've grown in myself. God has worked in me so much over the past few months, and although my goal originally was to, you know, help fill these seats, he's helped me grow as a person, and that's what's going to help fill these seats even more. So God's helping us grow in faith as we speak, and when the church reaches its full potential, we aren't going to be talking about how much God grew the church. We're going to talk about how much that growth grew us. Because we come in here, you know, and we bond and we, we all get to know each other, and we do all these things, and that is the environment that people are going to want to see. When you come to a church, that's what you want. You want to be able to come in here, you want to know these people. You want to be able to be around these people and just have the, most, the best time of your life, positive attitude, forget about all your worries and everything. You want to come in here and just and forget about everything. So tonight... Um, I'm going to go ahead and close in prayer, but if you feel like your mind needs to be renewed or that you haven't been faithful to God during this growing experience, you know, the altars are open. If you don't like the attitude or the energy that you've been putting forth, the altars are open. And I know waiting for growth and trying to be positive about it is difficult. Um, like I said, I'm clearly one to blame because it has been hard, and I have gotten discouraged at times, and it has bothered me more than it should have, and that's my fault. And, I mean, so it's... I'm just as much to blame as anyone else. So I'm not trying to point fingers or anything. I know it's difficult, but I can assure you that it will be worth it. So once this church reaches its full potential, we're going to look back on these days, and we're going to be thankful for all the hard work that we've put together to accomplish one common goal. And it's going to be the best feeling ever, y'all. So if you want to go ahead and bow your heads real quick, I'm going to go ahead and pray. 
Dear Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for this church. I want to thank you for all the opportunities that you've given us and that you are continuing to give us. I want to thank you for blessing us with uh, people in this church who are always willing to go the extra mile. I want to thank you for renewing my mind so I can be more appreciative and thankful for those around me and the things that you are doing for me. And I just ask that you continue to move on this church, Lord. Help us grow, but help us grow on your time. Help us do what is best to bring those in the community and those around us closer to you. I just ask that you renew our minds tonight so we can focus on you, God. And once again, just thank you for giving us the time, the dedication, and the energy for our seed to grow. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hi, everyone. Cornbread Chris Heineken here, of course, representing Resonate Sound and Resonate Church. We do want to indeed say thank you so much for allowing us into your homes or allowing us into church no matter where you are. Syndication, YouTube, simulcast, or just anywhere. Thank you so much for your support each and every week. Now, you're saying, hey, Cornbread, hey, Resonate Church. No, you guys have blessed us so much, but we want to turn around and bless you through the worship, through the act of worship called giving. How do we do it? Here are the four ways in which you can resonate your giving. And here they are. Number one, one of the ways you can do it is by joining us live right here at 418 County Road 4021, right off Highway 1 and Stadium Boulevard, right here in Jonesboro, Arkansas, during our worship experiences. Sundays, 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. Wednesday nights, our chapel youth service at 6.30. That's way to do it. Option number two, online. You see that tithe link right there on your screen? All you have to do is just go to that tithe link and you know, follow the directions and you can resonate your giving online through that, the tithe. All you gotta do is just make sure you follow the directions and all of it right there. That's option number two. Option number three, your cell phone. We all got one. So, hey, you wanna resonate? your gift using your cell phone, text the word GIVE to that number, that 501 number that you see right there on your screen. Something called text GIVE and just follow the instructions right there. Option number four, mail. If you want to mail your contribution to us via check or money order, you can do it with the address on your screen. But let us specify this. If you're doing check or money order and you're sending it to us, please make all checks and and money orders payable to Resonate Church. I repeat it. If you're sending a check or money order, please make the check or money order payable to Resonate Church. Those are your four options on which you can resonate your giving. And for more info, go to our website, ResonateChurchAR.org for all the church that's watching this broadcast right now on the side of our voice literally here's what we're all about to say and that's this the church rolls on God's time not ours let me say that again the church you as individuals not the building or anything else the church grows on God's time not ours. And please 
do not be spiritually poor and don't have that mindset of being spiritually poor you know why because the kingdom of heaven is ours take advantage of it and you know I, I you know I, I come from Memphis um, of course born born in raised and lived, lived a little bit in Northern Tennessee, but ended up moving to Memphis. And one image really, really popped out. It in, and it actually happens on the road, on that road. And the church doors were closed. Done away with. No more. And like three different churches operated inside that same building, but nothing. And the what? And it kind of reminded me of this statement that Tyler literally put out in this, in this program tonight. Churches will not last if Jesus is not the head of the church. That's biblical. I'll say it again. Churches will not last. If Jesus is not, is not the head of the church. When God comes first and you have the right mindset, that will attract everybody. And not just attracting people just to come to church because Sundays and Wednesdays or Sunday and midweek is the quote unquote religious thing to do. But, bottom line, Having the right mindset is literally going to help attract any and everybody to Jesus. To where, as great as weekly fellowship is, daily fellowship is even better. Don't you try to go grow in the kingdom? That's one thing our pastor always say all the time, whether God whether people have come here or been here before or they're here and they're moving on. He always says, go grow the kingdom. So let us say to you, if you really want your church to last, God's gotta be the head of it. Jesus gotta be the head of the church. That means you gotta have the right mindset because without the right mindset, Churches won't grow. Period. I, I mean, there's nothing to discuss. If you don't have the right mindset when it comes to Jesus, how will your church ever grow? And if you're being all denominational, then how will you ever make an impact when it comes to souls? Be the church. Be the church that God called you to be. Don't fit in with religion. Don't fit in with tradition. We're all called and we're all woven into God. So why don't you go out there and put Jesus as the head of everything that you do. Go be the church and most importantly, Go resonate Jesus by winning so, so, so. Thank you so much for watching. God, thank you for letting us resonate your sound. We're right here this Sunday night. We encourage you to join us. Until then, for our senior lead pastors, Brian and Carmen Adams, for our entire staff and everyone here at Resonate, I'm Chris Honigan. We say to you, show love, give peace, or yeah, resonate Jesus. We'll see you this Sunday night. The YouTube simulcast at 11 Eastern. Others, if you're on our syndicated television stations, you'll have it after your late local news. We'll see you this Sunday night. Have a good night, everybody. You know you can't touch this. So go and throw your stone.